Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video we'll be going over how I modified my turntable. Specifically, how I removed the preamp, added these RCA jacks, and separated out the phono grounds. Now why would you want to do these things? Let's start with the obvious. The elephant in the room, if you will. This. This is unacceptable. I mean, when you get this thing from the factory, these things are just dangling out of a hole in the bottom, and uh, I owned this turntable for one day before I decided this was unacceptable. So that's why I did that. The preamp removal, uh, there are other videos that go into much more detail with before and after spectrograms, uh, you know, of what this mod does. Uh, long story short, there are capacitors uh, that are there to filter out high frequency noise from all this wizardry here uh, and they also filter out some of the high frequencies from your vinyl so uh, that is a no good and uh, as far as separating out the phono grounds just you want a balanced signal left and right you don't want to tie your grounds to one side so anyways without further ado let's crack this baby open All right. So the first thing you guys want to do is move your other shit out of the way so you have room. Then you want to remove the dust cover from these hinges. Put them somewhere safe. Now remove the platter. Just pulls right off. Remove the uh, fader cap, which also pulls right off. And in my case, remove the screw securing on my little makeshift RCA panel. Also remove the head shell, just in case. So I'm going to put these blocks of wood down and we're going to prop it up on these blocks of wood. So you want to be super careful not to mess up the tone arm and also try not to hit any buttons. So make sure you look under, make sure you're not on anything. Settled into place, not on any buttons. Alright, we're good. Alright, so the next step is to remove the eight screws around the perimeter, indicated by arrows. Two on each side. Sometimes they will pop out with the brass spacer. Do not want to lose these. So I immediately just put them on the screws. This one too. Can join twins. Oh, this one too. Wow. I guess they get sticky after the first time. By the way, that's the hole where the RCAs used to come out of. Alright, this is the fun part where all the little brass spacers go flying everywhere. Ah, that wasn't too bad. Look at that, they even kind of Stayed on their uh, standoffs. Well, you look at that. So I got three already on here, so I got five more to fish out. So one, two, three, 
or wow all too easy all right guys so let's start with the bottom half here so this used to be here just peel it off it's adhesive so I dremeled out these slots which were a little thinner um, so I widened those a little bit and then I drilled and tapped for a 632 screw right there alright so here we are let's get to the meat and the potatoes shall we move this out of the way so here is where the preamp used to be this standoff had to get cut off because it interfered with the uh, the screw for the panel and uh, here's the uh, main work that had to be done so right here these are just like eight dollar RCA uh, jacks from Parts Express gold plated uh, pretty standard stuff all right, and try and so here these four wires come from the cartridge. These four wires I soldered on. Now, I don't even know if you can see that, but right there is a JR3. It used to be a jumper resistor there, aka a wire, which shorted the green and purple together. And that is a no good. And that got sent to the preamp before. So now we finally have what we should have had before, which is separate left and right grounds for a balanced left and right channel. So you also had disconnect. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Ooh. All right. Enough fooling around. There was a ground here. Had to disconnect that as well. And uh, let's see. That pretty much wraps it up for the interior here. So there you have it. Uh, completely reversible. I mean, I did some damage, but you would never tell if I stuck the sticker back on, right? That's right. I should also mention that I used the sticker as a template for cutting out this piece of 1 16th polycarbonate sheet and I uh, did that with a scroll saw then I just drilled three appropriately sized holes soldered these on and uh, Bob's your uncle alright now for the fiddly part which is reassembly which is a uh, little tricky now. Just leave this light in my way, but I will do my best. So you want to try to line this up, and you can see how this uh, screw hole lines up with that standoff. So we kind of fiddle with it until it kind of drops into place. That looks pretty good. Oh wait, maybe not. There, that seems a little better. All right, yeah, that's fine. So the panel we do last. First thing we do is our screws plus spacers. Assembly. A lot easier. And last but not least, the panel screw with built in star washer. Yeah. 
Everything's real good. And there you have it. That's how I modified my turntable. Now the sound quality can further be improved with a proper ground. And that might be a future video, uh, but I haven't decided how exactly I'm going to do that. Maybe a, a disconnectable one pin terminal like in cars uh, with a ring terminal on the end. Uh, something that won't have wires flopping out of a random hole in the case. Uh, but in any case, uh, hopefully this video helps somebody and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Bye bye.